This is a quick tutorial on the standard error of regression coefficients. Recall that we're using a sample of observations. Why? Because the population is too large. But what's the drawback of using a sample? Well, there may be sampling variation present. That is, a sample may not perfectly reflect the population due to noise and randomness in the sample selection process. Suppose we have the following population regression line. It's a dotted line as it's unobservable, but let's assume for now that we can see it. Now, imagine we grab a random sample of individuals and estimate the following regression line. It's pretty close to the population line, right? Now, suppose we resample from the population and estimate another sample regression line. And suppose we draw another random sample from the population and estimate a third regression line. Notice that all the sample regression lines were very close together. In fact, they were all very close to the population regression line. Thus, there were good estimates of the population regression. In this case, the sample beta estimates had a low standard error. It's a measure of how consistent the sample beta hats would be if we resampled over and over again. It's a measure of the amount of sampling variation when estimating beta. Now, suppose instead the sample regressions look like this. You can see that in this case, the sample regressions are not similar at all. There is a high level of sampling variation, and the beta hat estimates differ markedly from one sample to the other. So there is a high standard error for beta hat in this case. The standard error of a coefficient tells us how much sampling variation there is if we were to resample and re-estimate beta. It's an indication of how reliable the sample estimates are in our sample regression output. Suppose we estimate, using our sample of individuals, that the slope coefficient for wages and education is equal to 1. Suppose we estimate, using our sample of individuals, that the slope coefficient for wages and education is equal to 1. The question of statistical significance is this. Is 1 sufficiently large enough for us to conclude that this represents a true relationship between wages and education? Or is 1 too close to 0 and thus likely to be caused by sampling variation and randomness? That is, is 1 sufficiently different from 0 for us to conclude a non-zero relationship between wages and education? Well, suppose the standard error is 0.2. In this case, an estimated beta of 1 is 5 standard errors away from 0, which means it's pretty far away from 0. This is evidence that the population beta is not equal to 0 and that there is a real relationship between wages and education. However, suppose instead that the standard error is 2 then a beta hat of 1 is only half a standard error away from 0. This means it's very close to 0. This is evidence that the population beta is likely to be 0, and that there is no real relationship between wages and education. You can see that the standard error is vitally important in determining whether there is a true relationship between x and y in the population, as it gives us a sense of how far our sample beta estimates are from 0. Okay, time for a pop quiz. How do we know for sure whether the number of standard errors away from zero is large or small? That is, how many standard errors until we conclude that sample beta hat is too close to zero? Well, we use the critical value. It tells us the number of standard errors needed for a sample coefficient to be statistically significant. That is, for it to be statistically different from zero. We've previously covered the critical value in my hypothesis testing lectures. Be sure to check it out if you're unsure about critical values. Statistically insignificant means that even though beta hat is non-zero, its true population value is likely to be zero. Thank you for watching our tutorial today. We hope you found it helpful.